If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This has been another episode sponsored by Online Horse College. If you haven't had a look at the wide variety of equine-specific accredited courses, then go to onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Our sponsor today is Sophie Barrington from Archer Creative. Sophie does copywriting, public relations, social media, email marketing, graphic design and website design. So if you're frustrated by a low return on your investment dollars from your marketing efforts, talk to Sophie Barrington. You can go to horsechats.com slash Sophie Barrington or go to horsechats.com, search for Sophie, search for Barrington or search for Archer Creative and you'll find all her contact details so she can help you with your website. Today's guest is a repeat guest. It's Johan Schlies, who's an absolute master with saddle fitting. And he's going to talk today about 10 points about saddle fitting education. You know, so I, I think that itself is quite good. I think the education that he's given us so far has been brilliant. Now, he's flown over to Australia for Equitana. He's been on a flight for 25 hours on two flights. Is that 25 and a half hours? Is that right, Johan? Yes. That's, yes. Uh... Add it up. <laughs> okay. Plus a bit of a stop over in the middle. So, uh, yeah, if we, if you drift Ooh. off to sleep, we'll understand why. But, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, good, good. All right. Now, first of all, tell us, because we, we talk to a lot of equine professionals, you know, and, and we push the training, we push the education. I think the podcast itself is education, and we're really pushing education for equine professionals. And the only way that you can tell – how someone is going as far as their education goes is to have like a benchmark and that's where accreditation comes in. So credentials, accreditation, I think it's important, but you tell us why it's important to consider the credentials of your equine professional. And this is not just, even though we're talking about saddle fitting education, it's not just saddle fitting, it's about education all round. You know, Glennis, I I work now in many different salaries all over the world. And yes. I'm always very happy and, 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 and on it when I get invited mm-hmm. to all these different continents to speak about saddle fitting and protecting our horses. And I have not yet understood how come they have not regulated the credentials because we're dealing with a dangerous sport here. Yes. And um, horses are gentle giants Mm -hmm. and um, I have been told by my master and how I grew up in Germany that you can't even open your own business unless you have your certification. What I have found, I understand in the third world country, when I'm in India or I'm in China or well, in in, in areas where you, you might not have uh, such a huge sport such as America or Australia, mm-hmm. but there's really no credentials. You know, you, everybody can call them whatever they want. Yep. And um, the customer believes because, you know what, they just out of the blue calls themselves master mm-hmm. or a saddle fitter, but yet never have any um, formal tests or yes, formal yes. credentials. The customer believes it, and yep. they're practicing on people's horses. And maybe that's why we have so many people getting so upset about and confused about saddle fitting, because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then, of course, it gets blamed to the person mm-hmm. by saying, oh, you can't ride. And yet they are just practicing their trial and error yes. on, on clients who rely on I thought you're professional, and yet <laughs> they have just come up with their own uh, certification. Can you yep. imagine you go somewhere to a doctor and you think, okay, he's a doctor, but he just made himself this up? <laughs> you know, there's a beautiful movie from Leonardo DiCaprio. He's going to call, it's a movie called 
catch me if you can. I don't know if you saw it. Yes, but. yes. Yes, and I actually listened to a podcast from the person who they made the movie from. Is that right? Yes, yes. And this is how I feel like, you know, you can call yourself whatever you want and yep. off you go. Yep. And yep. the poor people fall for it and, and the poor horses pay in pain for, mm. in, by suffering, mm. you know. So yep. Yep. it's just not right. Yep. I think it's yep. important that people really ask, hey, where did you get your title from? yes. Yes, and I know that you travel around, you know, you travel all over the world, but the regulations in Europe and in North America are different. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about the countries that are regulated? Yes. Um, In Germany, you go for three years as a journeyman, Mm -hmm. and you can qualify yourself as a harness maker or as a bridal maker or as a sports saddler or as a Christian saddler. And then you have to travel after your journeyman for three to five years as a journeyman and, well, get experience under the supervision of masters. And then if you decide to have your own business, the German government doesn't allow you to open your own company unless you have a master saddler either employed or have that title. Mm -hmm. So if you decided after three to five years business as a journeyman, you then have to write a book, like just step-by-step how you make a saddle. You have to uh, go to a business school. You have to learn how to run your books. You have to uh, learn about how to teach young people. And then you have to work and make a saddle in front of five masters. So they they just sit there and watch you how to make a saddle. Mm -hmm. That's Quite um, nerve-wracking as a young man. I'm sure it is, yes. And um, if you have, um, I remember that at my uh, certification, there were 25 people at the certification, 12 of them fail. Mm. And um, you're standing in a half circle and the masters came by and says, well done, son. And the next, well, I see you again in a year and well done, son. Oh, my God. You know, so, (laughs) so anyway... Um, when I come to North America or even in, in, in England, you have a five-year journeyman in England, and then you become a journeyman. And sometime after many years of working, maybe 20 years or so, the company decided to give you the title of master, but there's no really a test, and you don't do bookkeeping, and you don't learn how the pedagogic side of how to deal with young Mm-hmm. adults who, who, how you teach them and how to, to put everything in a report or, and how do you do uh, graphic designs. So that was all missing from what I had to go through and then come to North America, and it's from my understanding in Australia the same, you don't need any certification. You can just hang up your jingle and say, hey, I call myself <laughs> PhD <laughs> yep. or whatever. Yep, yep, so, yep. So this sort of brings us to um, point number three, because you've talked about being a master. So tell us what a master, what you have to do to be a master in Germany. You know, if, if someone's going to really be a master, what happens yes. there? Yeah, so they, they hold you accountable for, they, they give you a couple of cases. Says, okay, here, here's this, yes, type please. Of horse, yep. here's yep. this type of saddle. How, how do you want to handle this? Uh-huh. And um, only after you have passed it with the minimum of 94%, they are extremely strict. And the reason why they're so strict, because the whole lobby behind it in the Chamber of Commerce, they don't want to have one salary after another one open up in their neighborhood. So if you want to have your own business and compete with other companies, you really have to know your stuff. And they don't want to have what I find a lot in Australia, and I find this a lot in North America, where the customer are fed up. They say, oh, here's another so-called master saddler, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't work again. Before you get the title as master, they give you, in Germany, a diploma, right? So a master saddler with diploma is something completely different than a master saddler who doesn't even have a, a, a school or 
uh, any kind of reference where they studied. So what the, does the term master mean? A master means that you have completed the challenge they provided you with mm-hmm. under supervision of other masters, and they have given you a diploma, which is registered with the German uh, Business Association, not just with the Camp Chamber of Commerce, but also with the local government. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I know that you've got courses. You, you know, you do courses yourself through Saddle Fit for Life. What about the courses that are offered there? Because they're international courses, aren't they? Are they international? You, you, you've got qualified people around the world that have met this particular standard and they're qualified, they're certified. Is that right? Yes. Um, when I started to do this in overseas, yep. And they asked me to teach us in Germany. Mm-hmm. I already had in North America my company since uh, 12 or 13 years. And I said, oh, come on. You can't find anybody else to teach us. I have yeah. to come all the way back from North America. It says, well, uh, you're strict. Um, control to the basics is there. Mm-hmm. And we love how you, as an ex-three-day international event rider, brought in from the rider's point of view, not just from the saddle maker, but also we saw all these doctors, gynecologists, veterinarian, equine body workers, such as massage therapists, osteopaths, acupuncturists, how you bring them all in your, in your book as well as in your teaching. So together with the German International Riding School, we made this an official trade Mm -hmm. and they didn't like the title of saddle police officer (laughs) they came up with the title of equine agonomist equine horse agonomist comes from the greek means measuring something three-dimensional such Mm -hmm. as an office chair an office chair is designed and built three-dimensional for the rider's bottom now an equine agonomist is able to measure the horse's back the saddle, and the rider's bottom. Now, in conjunction, he or she needs to know the biomechanics of horse and riders, the anatomy, but also the physiology. How does the muscles in the body work in conjunction with a horse, where the horizontal spine of the horse moves completely different than the vertical spine? So together with all what I just mentioned, the customer has a person who doesn't sell a product. That person, just like a police officer, when he pulls you over, they are not saying, oh, I love your Mercedes. They say, hey, your headlight is out. Yes. And they give you a ticket. Yep. Yep. And that officer does not fix your headlight. He says, get it fixed. Yep. Now, in the saddle industry, there's nobody running around the barns and gives people tickets. <laughs> mm. But in the saddle industry or equine industry, there's many people who say, yeah, yeah, you just want to sell me a horse, a saddle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you will say anything bad about my saddle. Yep. No, these people are specifically chosen to be non-product driven. They just put the horse first and they say, hey, look at this. You are sitting in the saddle, which is out of balance. You are riding in a non-gender appropriate saddle. And you are on top, without you notice, hurting your horse because the saddle tree is too narrow or too long or whatever. Yep. The customer listens to those people way faster than to people who want to sell saddles. Mm-hmm. And that's why, no matter in what country I am, uh, in South Africa is Sipsa. It's a, it's a big uh, equine organization in the United States is USDF, United States Dressage Federation. In Germany is the German National Riding School. In Ontario is the, um, in Canada is the Canadian Equestrian Federation. So we don't have the huge cloud, but we do have the association behind us because they give their trainers when they go through our course fifteen to thirty six credits. When a veterinarian takes our Econ Agonomist course, they get 32 credits. A vet needs to have 36 credits every two years. Mm-hmm. So needless to say, the veterinarian says, 
Now, that is something what I can A, need and use, and B, it's so nice to be able to talk to other saddle fitters or saddle makers how the saddle has to fit. Yep. Because it's not about this or that or the other saddle. It's about a product what enhances the horse's life and not cripples. Yep. Then the last not least, the other thing what Saddle Fit for Life does for very selected people who say, you know what, I actually also want to be able to make adjustments to the saddle. Not to build the saddle, it's a big difference. Mm-hmm. Not to build, but mm-hmm. to adjust the saddle. Yep. So for that, you need to find a company who will take you on a co-op where you drive with these people and after 120 horses, you then can say, okay, I'll be able now to do adjustments as well. So okay. we are very proud of it because we are the only saddle fitting company where you have to recertify in order to maintain your qualification. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Now, you said about the equine ergonomist and then the mm-hmm. trainer. Tell me about the trainer. Well, what we find is a lot the trainers, they get pulled in and they will ask, hey, can you look how my saddle fits? Yep. No, the trainer who rides a horse and teaches people can see the whole pictures or feels it and does not really know how to articulate it. But we have a lot of trainers who take these courses because they are stuck in the middle, literally. Yep. The, 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 the client says, oh, you know my horse so well, you know me so well, and I do need a new saddle, and do you mind, please look over when this and this, I have three different salespeople come and they mm. say all kinds of things about the horse, what you sold me or which you know. And the trainer very often is in the middle. And we find that the trainers are super benefit to become an equine or a saddle ergonomist because they're dealing with the subject tra- saddle, horse, student every day. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. By yeah. That. Okay. Okay. So, saddlers, tell me the difference between saddlers and saddle fitters. Well, um, as I mentioned before, um, I, when when I went to my apprenticeship program, we had some uh, apprentices for three years and never, ever, ever did anything else than making harnesses. Mm-hmm. And never touched a bridle or a saddle. Okay. And we had people who only did saddles, and some people only did bridles. So there's many people who did their three apprenticeship and never touched a saddle, mm-hmm. and for sure not, for sure not, learn anything about anatomy of the horse or the rider, biomechanics, the dynamic fit or the physiology. None of it. Yep. Not even if you did your masters. And even after you work for three to five years under supervision of masters and become a master, even then, a saddle maker, how to explain that? The best way to explain it is somebody works on a semi-line at, 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 at Toyota in, in Australia or in, in, in Japan yep. and, and, and assembles the seats in, in the mass production. Uh, yeah. That doesn't mean he is a test driver on the Formula One case. You know? yes. He does yes. not, maybe not be an excellent driver. Yep. Or you may not be able to analyze how good the gas consumption is or how good the car performs. Mm-hmm. That would be an engineer or somebody special. That saddle maker or the, the, the person who mass produces and puts the seeds into the, in the semi line of the Toyota plant has no clue about saddle fitting. Do you understand yes. what I'm saying? Like yes, that? I do. Yep. Yep, See, for sure. The consumer thinks, oh, you're a saddle maker, here's a clue. Mm. Most saddle makers, mm. they don't even ride. Yeah. They're afraid of horses. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They never see a horse. Mm-hmm. So there is a massive difference. And that's why we decided when we started this a new program and registered that with the German government, we made very clear that we don't call that saddle fitters because mm-hmm. the people who had the best ability to... to to buy the, any saddle or any service they can get. I'm talking about people with a lot of money. You know what they say? Forget it. Okay. Saddle fitters are horrible. Mm. They don't work. 
Mm. Many, many people call saddle fitter a bad name because of the experience they had with these people. Mm -hmm. They had, how do I say it? They assumed they know it, but they don't. And and the so-called saddler or self-proclaimed master saddler fiddler, fiddler, yep. Yep. <laughs> they practice on the horses, and, and before you know it, the, the customer had enough. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we wanted to stay away from the term saddle fitter. That's why we call them equine ergonomist and saddle ergonomist. And people say, what is that? Well, that is something that is able to measure three-dimensional shapes, such as the saddle, the horse, and the rider's her body, mm -hmm. and understands about biomechanics, physiology, and understanding that the saddle has to fit the motion and not just standing on the bench. Yes. And then people, oh, yeah. Yes. So the difference between a saddle and a saddle fitter is massive. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was giving you the analysis from the Toyota a power plant. Mm -hmm. Did I confuse you or... No, no. I, I'm just thinking about the, um, you know, the whole world of saddle fitting education, you know, and where saddle fit for life comes in. Just tell us a little bit more about that. You know, what makes it unique in the world of saddle fitting education? You know what? I just said the other day to my little girl, oh, my God, she turned 30 the other day. <laughs> so she's not that little anymore. <laughs> she is little. <laughs> but anyway, she says, Daddy, what keeps you up every morning? You're always so full of energy. You know, I said, sweetheart, when you teach somebody to take a horse or a rider out of misery, out of pain by showing them how it can be much easier. Yep. So teaching saddle fitting to other equine professionals so they can make a difference. I cannot even imagine or kind of put a number on this, how big the emotional paycheck is. Yes. So what yes. makes Saddle Fit for Life so special? That is not product-driven. What is completely evidence-based, it follows the law of nature and has all scientific evidence. It's not just an idea. It cracks me up when some people, oh, Saddle Fit for Life doesn't work. So that's exactly the same as somebody says, I don't think the earth is round. I think it's flat. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, those people exist. Yes. Right? And um, what makes Saddle Fit for Life so extraordinary because so many people from all equine professionals who work with the animal can benefit from it, they can learn it. And the fact that we are controlling it so strictly, in other words, we only let people on our website and promote them who have been recertified and who have taking the step and says, you know what, I believe on something. If I believe on everything, that means I believe on nothing. Mm. So if you can't believe on the horse, you can't believe on the simple physics, law of nature and the anatomy, then you're not part of Salah Fit for Life. And I think that's why it's growing so rapidly. So if someone's thinking, this is the type of work that I would like to do, you know, to help horses, help the riders, and they just would like to do something and they're interested in learning more, what sort of person would that be? They'd have to be fairly open-minded. They'd have to have a knowledge of horses. What, what else would they need? You know, we find that most people yep. who already have that mindset you just mentioned are body yeah. workers. Okay. People who do massage therapy, chiropractor, osteopath, masters mm -hmm. and uh, physiotherapy, veterinarians, even farriers, and mostly trainers who deal with this all day long. When you drive around and go from barn to barn, you lose a lot of time in traffic, right? Yep. So now imagine you're the horse and you can look at the whole horse approach. And we know more and more lameness on the leg is diagnosed as secondary, primary is the back. Mm. So imagine, Glennis, imagine you are an one of an extraordinary chiropractor. Everybody knows about you. And you're coming towards the back, uh-oh, look at here, we're constantly out here. Uh, you start yes. scratching your back and say, why is it always the back? Well, let's see where it, what sits on it. Oh my mm. God, look how mm. horrible that saddle is. Yep. yep. So while you're already in the barn, you can give the customer the option of A, you should get a qualified saddle or equine ergonomist 
or like you know them, saddle fit in, make sure they have the right credentials, or I'm already here, I only charge half because I'm already here, I can give you an evaluation. So these people are perfect because they're not salespeople. They're yes. there to help the horse. <laughs> they're there to tell you the reason why the saddle don't fit is ABC, not because I want to sell you a saddle. Now, without discrediting my own business as a production <laughs> company or discrediting my fellow colleagues as saddle makers, there's nothing wrong to sell a saddle if the saddle is in need because they want to buy a saddle or the saddle is too old to fix, right? Yep. But the, the answer to your question, what are the perfect people to do in equine agronomist, is definitely the body worker because he's there to help the horse in the first place. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com. Just thinking about then the philosophy for Saddle Fit for Life. Tell us a bit about that. I, this is going to kill my neck, you know. Maybe it's a shot in the dark or I'm, I'm setting my goal <laughs> up too big here. Yeah. But I have traveled Asia. I've been through Russia. And everywhere I go, Glennis, you get by with English. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's kind yep. of like a world language. Yeah. And if we could design a world language when it comes to saddle fitting, why can it not be saddle fit for life? Because saddle fit for life, it has only a few words would specify it. A, we know there are seven different methods of fitting a saddle to a horse. Mm -hmm. I had that discussion with you last time yep. I was on your talk. Yes. So Saddle Fit for Life only follows the biomechanics, anatomy of horse and rider, the physiology, how muscles work, and has the scientific background and not just an idea. Mm -hmm. So if we are really truly, if we really truly want to help the horse, why can we not say whatever color saddle, whatever size saddle, whatever discipline saddle, it should not sit in this area where the horse will deform badly, right? So the universal life, uh, sorry, the universal language like English that's my dream. It should okay. be saddle fit for life. Yep. That people look at the horse first, the anatomy and physiology. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty big shock because people like to come up with all kinds of ideas, but that's why I came up with saddle fit for life. It's for the life of the horse. That's yes. why it's important. Yes, I was going to say, why, why did you feel a need to start saddle fit for life? It's right in, I think that's our last question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a big goal. It's, you know, it's um, very good for the horse. I know that, you know, if people want to listen to you, your first chat with us, you know, you, you had a little bit of history there and, and a horse that had to be put down. But if you could tell to our listeners about that, and, you know, it might not have been that directly, but a little bit about the need. Mm -hmm. This is truly coming from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. because I believe sometimes a human comes closer with a horse than with another human. The, ho the dog or the horse gives yourself 100% to you. And there's, there's that bound between horse and, and, and human. And when my horse and I, we had that, and, and no matter what i done as a child in school or with my friends or my parents, I felt he understood me the best. Yep. And then when we competed for our own country and he took me through places where I thought we're not going to make it, but he helped me and we made it, mm -hmm. you know, we both trusted each other implicit. Mm -hmm. And only to find out that I unintentionally crippled him with my own equipment while I'm a saddler, of course I was mad with everybody who taught me, how come you didn't teach me this? Yep. In the end, yep. it's my own fault. right? And that's why I felt so strong about the need of nobody should ever lose their best friend of not knowing. Because mm. I'm a huge believer of people know what they know. 
they also know what they don't know. But the biggest part they don't know is what they don't know. Yep. And I see it every time. Every time I speak to people, they cry when they see what they do to the horse. Mm-hmm. Not before they felt bad, because they didn't feel, they felt like, oh my God, how did that not know? And of course they feel them bad. You know, they feel yes. bad because yes. oh, they, they, that, that, it's an emotion. I totally can feel with that because I've been through it. Mm. It's like anger and, and sadness and all this hits you in your heart so deep. And by having my name as last name and, and making so many sales over so many years, I felt, oh, yeah, this guy just wants to sell his own saddle. Well, pff, I can't sell 37,000 sales a year. And that's just in North America. Never mind yeah. about Europe, Asia, Australia. Uh, or anywhere anywhere else, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I felt the need so strong that I separated the Saddle Fit for Life from Schleser and pretty much do this now full time. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm super psyched that our courses are pretty much sold out. I think there's one spot left because that lady had an emergency, mm-hmm. but our courses are completely sold out for this week. Are they? Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, that whole emotional, it's a bit of a roller coaster, you know. We all want to do the right thing by our horse. You know, we love our horses. We want to do the right thing. But it's that whole ignorance, you know. If we don't know and don't realise what a bad job we're doing with the horse's welfare, I think that becomes, you know, quite heartbreaking. Well, this is why it's so cool that, what you do, Glennis, is, you know, your horse, uh, online horse college, you, you, you're helping so many people with with your program. And, of course, I'm, as I said before, and I'm, I'm a huge fan from you, and I'm honored that you had me know the third time back. But I hope I can open some people's mind, and I hope that they come to Equitana this weekend and listen to all the experts. A good friend of mine, Jim Masterson, is there. Yes. Who is an absolutely genius, who I learned a lot from it myself. So, yes, I, I, I can only congratulate what a wonderful job you're doing. Oh, thank and you. And I hope yeah. a lot of people listen to you. Yes, yes. And, and you know, I love it when people say, uh, they talk about people that they've learned from, and, and it often just keeps going because they, they have some really good points. But people like Jim Masterson, you know, I mean, there's so many people that have been great experts that we've been able to talk to. And you've just got to go to horsechats.com, you know, and search for Masterson or search for Jim, and you'll find that. And quite a few people, you know, that we've just had on the show you know, very generous of them and generous of you too, Johan, you know, to give your time because you've travelled a long way to be here. I'm sure you'd like to be just relaxing and, you know, having a good <laughs> sleep or something. But thank you very much for your time today. I've certainly enjoyed talking to you again, you know. Thanks again for chatting to us and I'll see you at Equitana, but hopefully we'll catch up again soon online. That would be great, Glenn. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you're still there, you probably know that I'm absolutely passionate about education within the horse industry. That's why I host this podcast. My other venture is Online Horse College. Have a look now at onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.